Hi and welcome to another video. This is a slightly different one. Nearly 10 years ago myself and five friends went to Vietnam. We hired trail bikes and rode from Hanoi to Sapa up in the hills and then across to the Chinese border and back to Hanoi. We then did a trip through uh, Ha Long Bay and had an absolute ball, met lots of people, had a lot of fun. But our video recording back then was just have the old GoPro going, taking photos, there was no audio um, and no real plan. So the very first nine videos on my channel are of that trip and I've just added a bit of country music to it. So to celebrate that trip, I wanted to do a bit of a cut down version, add a little bit of audio, more description and make it a little bit easier to watch rather than going through those nine videos with country music in the background. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you do. You're quite welcome to share it. And here comes the video. Well, I hope this narration makes sense. I'm trying to do the whole video in 15, or the whole trip in 15 minutes. Arrived in Hanoi on the weekend, so the traffic was nice and light, so we had a chance to get out, have a look around, try some of the local beers and cuisines. And being a Sunday, it was nice and light traffic to take off from. So we got our bikes, bit of fun. We had chocks around our feet, a little bit uh, disjointed the organisation there, but it was all part of the experience. We did have a bit of fun prior to leaving. Uh, we lost Jared for an overnight. Uh, he ended up in the wrong room and I think scared some local tourists uh, who never came back to their room. Didn't take long to get out onto the uh, countryside. Weather was good, it was warm, a little bit misty for the first day or two, uh, but after that we weren't too worried. Got to stop at a number of the small villages and have a look around the local area. It was uh, quite fascinating, especially coming from Australia. Jared trying to slap the ball there. Over the trip we had a, a few minor bingles and accidents. Um, I don't think anybody came away unscathed. I think Mike came away the worst of it. And you take it in your stride. We thought we were travelling reasonably fast, but quite often we were passed by a lot of people. This was at a hotel we stayed at, and in that time they were actually forecasting the perfect storm to hit Vietnam. Uh, we had no phone contact, or very little, so I think our partners were getting a little bit worried. Stopped where we could, had meals, uh, always local food was a lot of fun, always seemed to be rice wine around somewhere and this is getting up into the hills or the foothills you can really see during the war how um, hard it must have been to fight in those areas we stopped at this place, a little fruit stand uh, they were quite intrigued by well, right throughout Vietnam they were intrigued by Chris and Guy's bellies and they rubbed them for good luck at the fruit stand they actually wanted to weigh Guy a uh, gentleman here I sort of ran into in that little area and this is back out on the flats again they were cooking corn on the side of the road I'll add a few photos in very shortly um, to show you a little bit more out the place a little bit more of the local cuisine that is fried or deep fried grasshoppers Jared looks really into it well, his dad seemed to enjoy it a lot more and getting a little bit of the local um, in there and seeing how people lived was very interesting. Those ladies were carrying those parcels a long, long way down into the valley there. Still on the flats, but we're heading towards the hills, towards Sapper. And getting sore backsides a couple of times, so you spend a fair amount of time standing up. Right, this is the great race. Uh, a lot of fun to climb up into the mountains to where we were going. Sapper is actually 1,500 metres above sea level, so it was a fair run up there. Uh, you basically took your life into your hands, and if traffic got in the way, you made your way around it. Trucks didn't seem to worry too much about us. Uh, they left us to our own devices.
That's not probably the way to pass on a blind corner, I know. So it's really hilly country heading up that way. We actually ended up in the fog and the mist at one stage and you almost had zero visibility. This is the top of the climb where we had the race and there was a lady up there selling little duck eggs, cooked duck eggs. Um, she did that trip every day apparently from the bottom to the top on her little scooter. That's Johnny our guide, absolutely best bloke, top bloke. It's amazing what you come across on the road too, coming down the main road. We were followed, um, Johnny had arranged for a, a friend of his who followed us in a little blue van, so if any of the bikes actually did break down, uh, there'd be someone there to look after us and, and keep us going. Mike seemed to really get in with the locals and Jared liked to try some of the local things out as well. Some fantastic views once you got up into the hills. That's Johnny again. Jared with his safety gear, the green gumboots and the shorts and the raincoat seemed to work for him. This is Sapper, the beautiful hotel we stayed at there when we got there. We There was an elevator that brought us up from the reception to the top. Uh, we all piled in there and it, it broke straight away and all we could hear was uh, the local staff outside laughing saying the words like fat Australians, so they've broken it. The view was magnificent from the top. We were lucky because the next day it was fogged in and you could see nothing of the valley down below. We had a good walk around Sapper. It's a place a lot of people go hiking from all over the world and you'll find a lot of shops selling hiking gear and boots and things like that. A lot of fun, totally different um, style of people up there. Uh, but still very friendly. We enjoyed the markets and having a look around. Heading back down, so we're heading up towards the Chinese border now, coming down off the mountain. An incredible amount of um, small industry family businesses on the side of the road. Those white panels are actually veneers of timber and they use them to line the walls of their homes almost like wallpaper. And homes were just built out over cliffs and on stilts and but quite a few of them actually had the uh, the dishes. That's the blue van uh, that followed us all the time just in case something went wrong and broke down. You will see a photo, oh, there's Jared just getting off his bike. That's his cushion he bought in a market because he had a, a fairly rough seat and he found that a lot easier. That was a restaurant we went into. That's crossing the Yellow River. I don't know if they named the song after it, but who knows. And there's China, so we got where we wanted to go. We didn't cross into China, we just took some photos and we're off again. Other small adventures we had, we lost Mike for a few hours. Uh, his bike had stopped and we didn't realise and I think he was getting a bit worried sitting at the intersection until that blue van came along and directed him to where we were going. We took a whole lot of uh, pencils and pens and supplies and donated some money to a school while we were there and the kids were just absolutely beautiful. Back in Hanoi, stopped there overnight again. Uh, guy's trying to negotiate to get his shoes and boots relined and polished. I think the the bloke doing it one out on the money side. That's a scooter there with just crates and crates of uh, Coca-Cola. It's quite amazing to see. We saw people carrying concrete in big blue buckets on the side of their bikes. 
we had a wander around Hanoi, uh, went out for dinner, and that was a lot of fun walking across the road. You just basically walked and everyone went around you. If you stopped, you're more likely to get hit. The noise was just continuous, the tooting and everything else. The electrical cables up in the uh, overheads was fantastic. We'd organised a trip through Johnny uh, and we were heading out to Harlong Bay. He'd booked us on a party boat which was all backpackers so we were like the old men of the sea um, and it was a, a very interesting trip this one. And as we do, we in Australia, you give each other stick the whole time. And one of the girls actually commented and asked if we actually liked each other. Once you got out into the bay, it was there was boats everywhere, all the different party boats. Uh, we slept on it overnight. The beautiful accommodation, party games, and we were well accepted, even though we were, as I say, the old men of the sea. Um, we fitted in with everybody else. Went up into one of the caves while we were there and had a look around and then we went out swimming. Apparently there's nothing bigger than a tadpole in there left, everything's been stripped out and all the fishing is done by floating villages. There's one of them there, and the people lived on them their whole lives. The scenery was fantastic, really enjoyed it. We went to a resort for one night, it was a tiny little beach uh, surrounded in a cliff. There was a little generator there, and that was pretty much it. You had to conserve your water. But we went swimming there. Um, we had a big party on at the night. They put on a, a feast for us, and we had an absolute terrific time. Water was beautiful and warm, and we did actually believe them that there was no sharks or anything, so we all made it back. It's getting back on the boat. And then we went for a bus trip from one island, I think it was called Cat Cat Island, and over to the other side. We all bought stupid hats, well silly hats, we still got it, I still got my hat and I wear it now and again and it just brings back the memories. And we went on to another boat, these are some of the backpackers that were with us uh, from all over the world. It was a great trip. We really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I would recommend anybody, if you can do something like that once in a lifetime, <laughs> get out there and do it. I wish it had taken more film and made a lot more notes. So, as I say, it's 10 years ago, so you forget a lot of the detail and maybe some of the photos aren't in the right order. I would never go back because it would never be the same. It was a, a once in a lifetime trip. I'd have to go to a different country and try it again. We left there, uh, stopped over in Kuala Lumpur for the day, had a look around there and that was an amazing place as well. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and get out there, try it.